I look good, period. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl, Cassandra Muff. You know, Olivia, you already know what it is. Ya tu sabe como va. Bienvenidos on my channel. Yo soy Cassandra Olivia. Soy de Delaware. What's poppin', you feel me? Um, Y'all already know what this video is about, clearly by the title. So let's motherfucking get into it, okay? Grab your tea, grab your wine, grab your blunt, whatever you need to chill, and let's get into this motherfucking story time. Let me get comfortable. So, so in the background, y'all see my bed? Y'all see my bed? <laughs> so, um, I'm decorating my room and stuff. So, uh, I'm gonna post that in the channel separately. But, um, yeah, I got a little Fenty on my scarf. I just wanted to come on here and give you guys a really quick story time. It's actually 10:22. I gotta be to work by 12:30. So, I'm gonna do these, and then I'm going to go to work, and then hopefully edit these and get these up tonight. Fingers crossed. So I asked you guys if y'all wanted the story time about my coworker or if y'all wanted the story time about the clients I blocked. I've had several stories of clients I blocked. So what I'm gonna do right now is just do the client block story times and I might just do the coworker one under my membership cause that's, that's gonna have some crazy tea in there. But I got my mom receipts, okay? When I tell y'all I wrote down everything, I write down everything so I don't forget the timeline. I went and looked at everybody's appointments so on and so forth. So I think what I'm gonna do is a two for one. And yeah, let's get into it. Hold on. I can actually tell the second story off the dome. Two clients that I block story times. I'm gonna probably give y'all a double feature, you know, since it's been a while. Um, so I'm not gonna give y'all the real name, obviously, because I don't wanna get sued, okay? But I'm gonna give y'all some fake names, okay? We're gonna call this first lady, we're gonna call her um Shelly. I had this client named Shelly, and I have to look down if you see me looking at my notes, it's because this happened in 2021, 2022, and my memory is terrible, okay? I do a lot of people, so I like to write stuff down. And then I, whenever I block a client, you already know, like I do it on my app and I can see exactly what happened. So boom, had a new client, she came in, um, 2021 she hit me up October 2021 she was pregnant and at the time I used to have what's called an emergency appointment so essentially what it is is if you have me come in on my day off it's $200 additional on top of your service price let me say it again if you want me to drive an hour to work on my day off that's a normal day off like a Sunday or like let's say evening hours you want me to come at nine o'clock at night something where it's an emergency which is why it's an emergency appointment I used to charge 200 extra dollars on top of my regular service price okay let's just get that out the way the reason being is because it's an emergency you feel me so i don't like working sundays i don't like working mondays i don't like working tuesdays typically i only do friday and saturday or i'll do a thursday and saturday or thursday and friday be off saturday right now in my career i only work two days a week three days tops only because right now it's prom season bam so this lady hit me up she got an emergency squeeze in and she paid the fee. Um, I emails her, <clears throat> she reaches out. Matter of fact, let me pull up the emails, hold on. Please hold. Shelly says, the title is emergency appointment request. This was on September the 17th, 2021. It said, I would like to talk to you about booking an emergency weaving appointment. I would like to purchase your bleep wig. It's made out of the virgin Cambodian hair, da da da. And then she sent this to my friend who sells hair. So my friend forwarded it to me. And basically my friend sold her the hair. I'm the person that's actually gonna install the hair. She lets me know what she needs. Basically she wants a sew and weave. Um, she was due, I think like in October. So she was basically like, I wanna get my hair done right before I give birth. Okay, cool. But she wanted me to come in on an off day. So I said, um, good evening, I can install the wig, but I don't make wigs. So again, I referred her to my friend. We did a little bit of back and forth, got that all situated. She said, thank you for your prompt reply. You know, I um, haven't heard back from my vendor. You know, I just need a bundles washed and dyed. I need number one, da da da. Like she's giving me all the background of her hair story. But basically she just know she wanted to sew in. She's asking me about my services and then we finally get to the hair appointment. And we decided to squeeze her in on October 6, 2021. I don't remember what day that is, but just know it was an off day. So, of course, she paid the emergency squeeze-in fee. And then what I do is I send the invoice first for the full balance. So, I don't do, like, you pay half now, half later, or just pay the 200 pay me the rest when you get there. Because, one, I don't know you. Two, it's an emergency. And I feel like if you really need your hair done that bad, I should get my bread up front. Because you know I'm going to be there. And my clients, they know how I am. Like, I, I do this, okay? I know I'm coming. They know I'm coming. I know they gonna be there, and they know I'm gonna do the best job I can possibly do. So we ended up doing her hair um, October 6th. Everything was fine, did her sewing, and then I believe like a week after that, or two weeks after that, she ends up giving birth, having her baby, whatever. Fast forward, she comes in January, she gets an Olaplex service, which is just, you know, when I do the intense, you know, 
and I, I take care of the clients here. You already know how my Olaplex service is. If y'all don't, go on my channel and be sure to check that out. Sidebar. If y'all want to know about my room and my decor, follow me on LTK, follow me on Instagram. I had to plug that. Follow me on TikTok. You know, follow me here. Hit the like, all of that. Now that I got that out the way. So we did the Olaplex service January 6th. She comes 10 minutes late, but it's okay because I have a 15 minute grace period. Meaning that if your appointment's at 10 o'clock and you schedule it yourself, because all of my clients schedule their own appointments. If your appointment's at 10 o'clock, you actually have until 10.15 to get there. At 10.16 is when I charge you. Let me say that again. If you make the appointment, because my clients self-service themselves on my website, you pick the time, right? You pick 10 o'clock. You still have until 10.15 to get there. At 10.16 is when I charge. I always have done that. This has been my policy for probably the last nine years I've been doing hair. That went okay. She ends up coming back in for a weave maintenance on February the 18th. That appointment is where I kind of knew this wasn't going to be a good fit for us. Because what happened was she booked a braid down. Now at the time, my braid down services were only um, certain time slots. I book everything so that way I have enough time to wash your hair, blow dry it, braid it, and get you on your way. So essentially, when clients book a braid down, it takes me about an hour. So what I do is, instead of me booking 11 to 12, I'll do like 11. This, this specific time slot was from 11 o'clock to 1.20 p.m. Plenty of time for me to have you get braided down. If you, if you run late, it's still enough time for me to get you done. A braid down is real quick, right? It's just a couple straight back cornrows so that way you can put your wig on like how I have now. Boom. So she comes in to get the braid down and she's telling me about this wig that she ordered. I feel like she told me it was a blonde wig and it needed to be customized. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm thinking that once she's done the braid down, she was gonna go home and then just put her wig on. So I do the whole service and like as I'm shampooing her stuff, this is one of my pet peeves. If I'm shampooing you, allow me to do my job before you comment. And let me say that again. Allow me to do my job before I comment. So for example, when I wash my client's hair, typically what I do is I'll saturate the hair fully with water for about 30 seconds, meaning that I'm getting the hair wet because there's no point on putting shampoo in the hair if it's not going to lather. So you want to make sure, especially with natural hair clients, that you get the hair soaking wet then you start applying your product. It just makes it go through the hair easier and you wanna make sure that you have that good saturation or whatever. So I just remember, I'm shampooing her hair, I, I put the water in and what I normally do is I'll go like this, put a little bit of shampoo at the top just to get the top area, I'll go back, get the back, and then I start my scratch, okay? I start to scratch, I start to get in there, I start to do all of this. <laughs> my shampoos, anybody can tell you 20 minutes, minimum. Because I was trained when I um, went to beauty school and even outside of beauty school, I've worked at JCPenney salons. I've worked at so many different salons and we were always trained to do three shampoos. So I'm barely getting the product in. I'm just trying to really work it through her hair before I really start to scratch. And she's like, oh, you can scratch a little bit harder. So I'm already like, relax. I'm just trying to distribute the product. Like, I got you. Just give me a second. So she's like, okay. So I'm shampooing her hair. Everything's fine. And then like, as I'm going, she's like, can you can you scratch back here and i'm thinking girl give me a fucking second to get the product in like why are you asking me to scratch and i haven't even started scratching yet like i'm literally just trying to work the shampoo through your hair before i start my scratch so give me a second sis like calm down you doing too much so already in my head i'm like all right but hey i have to take into account that some hairstylists don't wash hair well she's this is her second time coming to me, right? So she probably don't know what my, my routine is and my system and all that. So I'm thinking like, you know, just give her a little bit of grace. I am willing to work with you because I understand people have their own situations, their own experiences, their own trauma. However, that has nothing to do with me. So when you come to me, I need you to come to me as if you've never been to a hair salon before. I need you to come with a clear and open mind. I need you to come ready and willing to accept whatever I'm going to do. Now, granted, if I was finished the whole entire shampoo service and you felt as though, oh, I need you to scratch this or, you know, you need to add more product that's fine like tell me that but allow me to do my job before you comment on how i'm doing it because that's just irritating that was going on um i finished braiding her hair down so i shampoo her i'm braiding her down i'm done in like an hour 20 minutes i got extra time left over i have another client right after her because when i work i'm booked back to back to back from the time i get in to the time i leave i don't even take a lunch break that's how booked i be so what happens was i did her braid down everything was cool but then I get done and I'm like, okay, you're done. You know how you gonna pay cash your car? She kind of like does one of these like, oh, are you done? And I'm like, yeah, like you booked the braid down. It literally says on my website, braid down only. It tells you it comes with the wash, you know, deep condition, blow dry and straight back cornrows, no hair added. So it is in caps. It literally says braid down only. So there's no way you can forget it. Even if you forgot, you get two email reminders 
Um, you get one when you book, you get another email two days before your appointment, you get a third email the day of your appointment, and you also get text messages that go along with each email that describe the service, the time, and all of that. So that way it holds you and I accountable. So boom, I get done the braids, and she's like, I can't leave like this. And I'm like, what do you mean? Because this is all you book for. I got somebody else coming right after you. She's like, my wig is in the bag. Can you put my wig on for me? Now, mind you, the whole time she was talking about the service, you know, while I'm shampooing, I'm thinking in my head, you should have started off with that and asked me. But what you're not going to do is spring it on me. And I, I used to be such a nice and like sympathetic, empathetic hairstylist. I still am, don't get me wrong. But I feel like sometimes when you're like this, and my hairstylist can relate, my makeup artist, whatever. Sometimes when you're too nice, people can sense that and they will take advantage of you. So she's like, I can't leave like this. And I'm like, well, you only book for a braid down. And she's like, no, like I have to go somewhere after this. Like I'm going to work or something. So I'm like, obviously I don't want her to go to work with her hair just braided straight back. But I'm also thinking like, why would you book just a braid down if you knew you wanted a whole wig installed? Like that's a whole different situation. I would have customized your wig starting off. I don't even do same day customization. So I would have had her drop the wig off so it's ready and prepped. So that when you come in, all I have to do is put it on your head. It's blonde. She's chocolate complexion, so can you imagine like me trying to now customize the wig, put the wig on her. I didn't, I don't remember if I glued it down or if I used got to be glue, but essentially what happened was I ended up doing the wig install for her. I only charged her for the braid down. <coughs> Excuse me. She asked me how much additional it would be, and I told her don't worry about it <clears throat> because at this point in my head I knew she was blocked because what ended up happening was the time it took me to customize her hair, braid her down, put the wig on. My second client came early. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Sound a little manly. My second client ended up coming early. So what happened was, when I like normally when I'm finished, I still have like another 30 minutes, so that way I can sanitize, wipe everything down, prep for my next client. So that way, when you're coming in, it's not hair and stuff everywhere. Like I can literally reset my room, and it's brand new for each and every client. Client after her happened to be a brand new client. She's never been to me before. So I'm like, you know, I'll be right with you in a few moments. But then I put the wig on, it's straight, and I'm like, okay, you know, she's like, I'm gonna just leave it straight, like, I'm not gonna hold you up, I know your next line's here. But then after she sees it straight in the mirror, she's like, can you curl my hair? So now I done did the wig install, the customization, curled your hair, and I'm not charging you, because at this point, I'm, all money's not good money, I'm not pressed on the money. What I'm pressed about is the respect for my other client's time, because this is a bad first impression. Just, just me personally, even if I'm early, I'm gonna be looking like, well, dang, she's supposed to start me in 10 minutes. Like, she's about to start curling this lady hair. So, obviously, she's not gonna be done in 10 minutes. That's just how I roll, right? So, what ended up happening was I ended up running 20 minutes late to my new client. She's sitting in the hallway. I have my door open because it's, it's a private suite, but we have seating in front of the rooms. She's watching me do this client. She's kind of just sitting there. She's being super kind and friendly. And she's been to me several times. So, thank you so much to the client who's after her. But it was just like, for me, that anxiety of like, oh my God, I got to rush. This next person's here. You know, now she's asking me to add this on. I already didn't want to do it. Like, I just was already kind of flustered and frustrated with the situation. So from that point, I was just like, you know what? Maybe we're not a good fit. Fast forward. She comes back on January the 27th. She wants to get a weave maintenance. She comes in to get the weave maintenance. Um, I believe she came... 20 minutes late to that appointment but again i was just like whatever come on we made this pretty easy just shampoo the hair wash it blow dry it you know whatever send you anyway um wait am i getting this mixed up oh yeah yeah okay so she came to get the weed maintenance that was okay week of valentine's day i was booked she hit me up and was like hey can you get me on valentine's day or the day before and i'm like no like unfortunately i'm i'm booked However, she had an appointment the following week on the 18th. So I just told her like, hey, unfortunately, I don't have anything on Valentine's Day. It's a busy week for me. However, I'll see you in a couple days after that. You know, we'll get you squared away. The one on the 18th was a breakdown. This is how I knew I was done with this lady. Let me, let me pull this up. And this was the day she was blocked officially. Because I, I was nice and I should have just followed my gut. And this is why I always now, if I have a weird feeling, even if you come in and your vibe is just not clicking with mine, I'll still be like, I'm cool off you because I don't want it to get to that point where I have to figure out what it is in my spirit that senses something's off about you. I'm not gonna click with everybody. I know everybody's not gonna click with me. That's perfectly fine. But the people that are meant for me are meant for me. So the braid down was February 18th at 11 o'clock. Guess what time she shows up, y'all? She gets there at 11.47. 
Her appointment was at 11 o'clock. She gets there at 11.47. When I get there, I'm thinking like, when she gets there, first of all, I'm already like, you're charged because what happens is when you're late, more than 15 minutes, it's a full charge because now you're, I feel like you're wasting my time playing in my face. I could have somebody else come in. So she was charged. Her car went through. That was no issue. I'm in the back chilling, you know, prepping for my next client because at this point, the show's got to go on, right? Um, what ended up happening was she comes to my salon and she's ringing the doorbell up front, like ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. So somebody lets her in. She comes in, she's all, ah, I'm so sorry, I'm late. Now, mind you, she lives not even five minutes away from where I work. I live an hour away and I still be early. I have three kids. I think she had another kid, I want to say, and a newborn, which I understand. So in my heart of hearts, I was like, you know what? She was begging me, like, please, I just need my hair braided down. I'm not going to add nothing extra. I'm like, okay, cool. We already starting off kind of okay. But at this point, I already knew, like, kind of I was going to block her afterwards, right? Just because the vibes were not vibing. She comes in. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be able to take you, like, because you're you're 45 minutes late. And then she was just like, no, please. Like, I just had a baby. Da, da, da. And I'm like, you know what? She's a, you know, a new mom again. I get it. Sometimes babies have, like, you know, explosions. Or you might be halfway to daycare. You forgot the diaper bag. You got to go back. Um, I feel like she was working from home or, like, she was taking care of babies and her husband was doing his own thing. So I felt like, you know, maybe she's just a mom just trying to get acclimated to, like, trying to balance, you know, a newborn. So I told her, just come on, that's fine, I'll do your hair. As I'm shampooing her hair, she gonna tell on herself and tell me the truth, which I kind of appreciate, but at the same time, if it was me, I would've lied, straight up. If I, if I told you I had a newborn, I would've ran with that, honestly, just because at this point, it's like 45 minutes late, please take me. I'm gonna use like, you know, my baby, you know, I had explosive diarrhea, I had to go back, you know, whatever. I could be more understanding of that. The reason why she told me she was late, this is how I knew she was blocked. I literally blocked her right after this. I'm sitting at the shampoo bowl, I'm washing her hair, we're doing our thing. I'm already kind of irritated because I'm like, now I gotta play catch up. I gotta make sure I get her done still in a decent amount of time to clean up my suite, all of that, right? She's like, oh, I was late because she had on an outfit and I guess her pants had lint. I remember this specifically. Her pants had like lint or something on it. And she's one of those like bougie black women. So she was like, you know, my husband, he works, he's a six figure, da da da, he makes all this money. And I didn't want him to come home and see that I look dusty. So what she did was she took a shower and changed her clothes at her appointment time at 11 o'clock and then decided to come to me. Now, why the fuck would you tell me that? So now I'm like, oh, it's not even no emergency. It's not even the fact that you were trying to get your baby together. You were just trying to get cute for your man when you could have just came as you were. I don't care how you look. Clearly, y'all know I don't care. Like, I'm so down to earth. But then you could have left and then just got cute when you got home after your hair was done. You feel me? So the fact that you told me that just lets me know you have no regard for my time, right? Fast forward. I blocked her. I opened up um, I opened up my online booking, which was, I think, the following weekend. Hold on. Let me pull up this email, y'all, because it's about to get juicy. Okay. I opened my online booking the day after her appointment. Okay, that's what happened. So she came the 18th. I blocked her February 19th, which was a Saturday. I opened my online booking at like nine in the morning. She goes online to book. And what happens is when you're blocked, it'll give you a message. It'll say banned, but then you can also put in a little note that lets them know why they're banned. So let me read my note that I put in here. I just put client is banned late beyond the 15 minute time frame. I think nothing of it. I go about my day. I'm at work now because I open my book. I have it automatically set to send out while I'm working so I don't forget. I'm working. I come home at night. I see her email. She sent at 1041 in the morning. She says, good morning. I'm trying to book my March appointment via the VIP booking system. However, I received the message found below. Am I no longer able to book or page on your establishment because I was late yesterday? Question mark. Thank you for your attention to this matter. So this is what I hit her at. Wait. And, oh, and then she double emailed me. So she double emailed me and then I think she DM me the same thing trying to reach me. But one thing about me when I'm working, I don't check my phone, right? So this was my response. Oh, oh, and let me let me remind a little bit. So the whole day goes on. She she emailed me at 10 something in the morning. I get home at like maybe 7, 8 o'clock at night. I chill with my hubby, my kids. When I get home, I like to disconnect. I don't check my phone until, you know, the following like Monday because now it's the weekend I don't work Sunday so sometimes it'll take like a day or two depending on what I'm doing all my clients know this I get a random cash at hold on let me let me see if I can still pull it up I'm gonna put this on the receipts too y'all I'm, I'm gonna put this on the receipts at 10 42 p.m. so now it's 12 hours after she sent that email I get a random $100 cash app that says for inconvenience fee Mind you, you already blocked once I block you, there's no way that I'm gonna unblock you because I gotta protect my peace and my sanity. And again, all money's not good money, right? So this is what I do. 
I refund it back and I post all of this on the on the somewhere on the screen, right? I refund it back at 10:58 as soon as I saw it cuz I'm sitting there talking to my hubby. We laid up on the couch watching TV. All I hear is ka-ching. I'm like, nobody owed me money. Who who's sending me money? I see that and I'm like, "Oh, so then I, I go in my email to like let her know I refunded her and that's when I saw her email that I just read to you guys. So this was my response. I said, good evening, I just received both of your email messages. I like you as a person, but I just don't think that we're a good fit for each other. The tardiness and the additional add-ons caused me to run over 20 minutes behind on a new client and I don't like to be unprofessional. I have refunded your cash app as well. It's not about money for me, but just the respect for my time and my business. I try my best to create a great experience for everyone, and unfortunately at this time, I cannot add on additional timing to your service. Oh, and I don't think I'm the right stylist for you. Best regards. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back. I skipped the whole message. My bad, y'all. Let me go back. So let me let me read this. Let me go back. I skipped the whole message. I'm so sorry. So when she said, I'm trying to book the March appointment, she double emailed me back to back. So she sent me a screenshot of her being banned. Now, obviously, I know you're banned because I put the ban on there. So she sends me that. And then at 9.52 p.m., so she messaged, she emailed me at 10 o'clock, 10.40 in the morning. Again, I worked all day, I came home, I was chilling, I wasn't on my email. At 9.42 p.m., this is her, her email to me after the first email that I didn't respond to just yet. Um, she said, okay, wait, hear me out. Before you kick me to the curb, I really do like you as my new hairdresser. You have mad skills and I really like your whole setup. Can you charge me more to block out an additional 15 minutes to a half hour for every appointment? I really need more flexibility. I'm new to this. So again, my response, let me, let me hit you with my response again. Good evening. I just received both of your email messages. I like you as a person, but I just don't think we're a good fit for each other. The tardiness and the additional add-ons caused me to run over 20 minutes late behind on a new client and I don't like to be unprofessional. I have refunded your cash app as well. It's not about the money for me, but just the respect for my time and my business. I try my best to create a great experience for everyone. Unfortunately, at this time, I cannot add on additional time into your service, and I just don't think that I'm the right stylist for you. Best regards. That's how we ended that. So then, she emailed me afterwards and just said, no problem, I understand. That was good. Um, I didn't even block her on Instagram. She could probably watch this video now she wants to. It's just the respect for my time and then my other client's time, because how I see it is, right, if I, if I add 30 minutes for your appointment, I gotta do that for everybody. And I'm not on that type of wave. That's why I have my booking the way I have it set. I don't wanna be sitting around waiting for you. Another thing is, you book your own appointment time. So if you know you booked at 10 o'clock, but you don't wanna show up to 11, book at 11 o'clock. Or, or trick yourself, tell yourself it's at 10 and show up at 11. You feel me? Like there's so many other things you could do before you send me that bogus ass message asking, could I add an extra 30 minutes to all your appointments so I could sit around twiddling my thumbs? When I could just do somebody that appreciates my time, like that was so insulting to me. The fact that she sent me money like a here, like a, I'm gonna give you this, I'm gonna get back in there. And I'm like, nah, stay over there. So that's how that went. Um, I haven't seen her since. She still goes to my friend. Um, she still comments sometimes under my, my Instagram post. It's no love lost. It's just professionally, as a client, we just are not a good fit. So that is story number one. And let's get into my fucking story number two, which is more recent. I might just run these literally back to back on the same video. So this is my story time about a client who no showed me twice and I didn't even know until the second no show. Y'all better hold on to y'all seatbelts for this. So this client, we gonna call her T because that's what her name actually starts with. Low key backwards so it can unfold how it unfolded for me y'all in real time. Because the people, my thing is if I block you, why would you try to come back to me? And why would you try, you know what? This is what I be saying. Sometimes you can't take everybody. All right, so here we go. Let's run it all the way back. I'm gonna put the screenshots on the screen somewhere. Y'all already know how it goes. May 9th, I had this client, T. She goes online. She books an appointment for Friday, May the 26th from 12.10 to 3.10 p.m. It was a new client silk press package, which is bundled in. Um, it includes like a shampoo, the deep condition, trim, all of that. Like everything you need in one service. I just do a package instead of trying to a la carte everything. It just makes it easier for me. And it gives me a little bit more time because typically new clients take longer because they haven't been to the salon in a while. I don't know the hair texture. I might need to do some more detangling, another treatment. It just really depends on what they need. So for new clients, I block out typically three and a half to four hours, okay? Let's just get that out there. She pays the deposit on May 6th from May the 26th. Friday, May the 26th comes, she no shows. I don't hear nothing from this lady at all. I'm talking, I'm sitting at the door because normally I'm, I'm like ready 30 minutes early. I told y'all that, I'm cleaning up. I sit up front, I just wait. So that way if you come early, you can just come in. Like, come on in, I'm here to service you. She no-shows. I'm like, okay. At uh, 
her appointment was at 1210. So look, at 1226 or whatever that math is, 15 minutes later, y'all do the math, I'm tired right now. But just know 16 minutes later, Sorry y'all, I ran out of storage, I had to come back. Okay, just now, 16 minutes later, like I said, I have a 15 minute grace period. So on minute 16 is when I charge you because I don't want nobody to be able to dispute like, oh, you charged me too early, I was pulling up. I'll just leave it 15 minutes and then charge at minute 16, okay? She no shows, I'm like, she ain't coming, whatever. Don't know her, she's never been to me before. I try to charge her debit card. Of course her card gets declined. This is how I know when somebody's playing in my face because typically, like if somebody no shows, what they'll normally, I, I rarely have no shows, guys. When I say rarely, I'm talking maybe 10 in the whole 10 years I've done hair. Like, it's super rare to have a no show. But because of the people that have no show to me before, I have very strict policies because I don't like playing with my time. I'm driving an hour to work. What if you're my only client for that day, right? Or what if I come there at 7 in the morning? So I just, I'm very strict when it comes to no shows. She doesn't come. Um, I don't hear from her. I'm like, okay. I think I try to call her block because I don't give nobody my phone number just to check on her. She didn't answer. I go to charge her card. Her card's declined. I said, okay, she playing. She must have known that she wasn't going to come. So she blocked her card. So that way, you know, I can't charge it. Let me just tell y'all a little something about me, a little bit of background. I used to work at the bank. So I know how this works. My mom used to work at the bank. So I know a little bit of background about this. Um, I'm very educated and I play it cool on people level. Because you don't always want people to see, like, what am I saying? You don't always want people to see every card that you hold in your hand, right? So a lot of times I just play like I'm one of these, you know, I'm a professional stylist. I do my booking, how I do it. But people don't really know that I'm very intelligent, right? And if I don't know how to do something, I'll figure it out. I go to charge her card, it gets declined. Again, her appointment was May 26th. So then I just type in her name on my um, Acuity app because what happens is when I type in your name, I could see if you try to book another time, maybe if there's another card. I pull up the Acuity app, y'all. I kid you not. A year prior, this lady did the same thing to me, and I didn't peep because what happened was, we're going to call her T, right? T reversed her name. So my name's Cassandra Olivia. That's like me booking under Olivia Cassandra. So that's what she did. And for whatever reason, my Acuity app didn't, ch uh, didn't catch it. How I caught it was when I typed in T, you know, her name, it came up reversed. And I'm like, it's two people with the same name. I haven't met both of these people. Let me just click this and see what's going on with this. This is the same person. She uses the same email, the same phone number. So now I'm like, oh, this is definitely her. I go on her old profile and I see, oh, she never came. So I'm gonna post that up here somewhere, but just know a year before she did the same thing. And I didn't even charge her a year before because I'd be so busy, I think I forgot. So what I do this time, I said, bitch, you're not about to do this to me twice. You ain't about to play in my face twice. Fool me once, shame on. Was it you? Fool me twice, shame on me. Oh yeah, you ain't about to run that shit back twice. My ass charged her on motherfucking June 2nd. You hear me? I tried to charge her card the day of her appointment that she no showed, it didn't go through. I tried to charge it the next day, it didn't go through. I think I waited like two more days, tried to charge it again, didn't go through. But what I remember was uh, June 2nd, I'm looking at my notes. It's a Friday. Most people get paid Friday. So I said, let me pull up and just try to charge her card at like six in the morning because most people get direct deposit on their cards. It's the weekend. And also, um, I forget what was going on in Delaware or something. It was like something going on. So I'm like, oh, this is the weekend where everybody gonna be out just chilling. So let me just try to charge it first thing, crack it on. I get up early. I'll be up at like four in the morning. I goes to charge her card, y'all. And it motherfucking goes through. It goes through. Oh, let me rewind. I'm sorry, my story's all over. Oh, I'm so sorry, my story's all over the place. So I go to charge her card. It doesn't go through. She does send me an email, but she sends me the email in the evening. Let me look at the time frame. She sends me an email at 2.58 p.m. I'm gonna pop the email here. It was like, hey, I have a family emergency or something. But my thing is, if you really had a genuine emergency, you would have emailed me in the morning when you got the confirmation text, when you got the confirmation email. I have it to where when you book with me, you get that confirmation four hours before your appointment and you get the text four hours before. So you have plenty of time, even if you were in the thick of something going on, to shoot me a quick message saying, hey, I'm not gonna be able to make it, so sorry. But the fact that you emailed me almost three o'clock, your appointment was at 12, your card was declined, just sends that, just lets me know that you were really playing, you didn't wanna get your hair done, and you thought you was gonna run off on the plug, but bitch, this ain't that, okay? T, you got me fucked up and you had me fucked up. So. What happened was she emails me. Let me pull up her email. <laughs> Let me see what this lame ass excuse. Let me see what this lame ass hoe said. Hold on. Let me see. 
And the crazy thing was, she emailed me and I didn't even peep who it was because again, it was a year before. So when she was like, hey, how do I book? I said, oh, you have to book under the new client still package for your uh, first visit. It's stating on my booking website. You know, I went and adjusted it online for you. And then, who's at my door? Tomorrow, Mr. Jehovah Witness. I ain't about to answer that. I got to finish this damn story so I can get to work. <laughs> so anyway, um, the fact that she emailed me late, the fact that her car was declined, I'm like, oh, she playing in my face. But then what really pissed me off was the fact that I went and checked her profile and I saw that she did this to me before and she got away with it. So this time I was determined. I'm like, you're not about to play in my face. Let me show you who the fuck I really am, right? So like I said, her appointment was on May the 26th. I charged her car June 2nd. And you know, oh, let me read the email. They, they rung the doorbell, threw me completely off, hold on. So, she emails me at 2.58 p.m. She says, hello, I have a deposit of $60. I had an emergency come up unexpectedly. Can I reschedule my appointment for the next available? Now, you know showed on me twice. Why the fuck would I give you my next available? You can't even come to me anyway because now you're banned on both pages or both accounts that you created. But why would I even extend the olive branch to get you in when you know that your car was declined and you really trying to... And it's, it's almost 3 o'clock and your appointment's at 12? Okay. So I said... Good afternoon, no worries. Unfortunately, we will not be able to reschedule. Enjoy your weekend. So like I said, she goes, I charged her car on June 2nd and I knew she was gonna be pissed because it went through. So what was the total charge? Her total was 220, she paid me a $60 deposit and then she also paid me 160. So yeah, she paid me $220 for not showing up. Thanks, ho. So anyway, um, and I know she probably gonna see this, I don't care, you a fine fuck, um, cause she had me fucked up. She learned who the fuck I was that day. So anyway, um, she put a, a dispute in with my car reader for Square. And the dispute reason was no knowledge of the charge. Like somebody took her car and was unauthorized. So what I did was I sent all my screenshots to Square of her booking the appointment, the fake appointment. I'm gonna put everything on the screen here. Just know that when you do a Square dispute, you have to wait 90 days. I won the dispute on day 90 and got my money. But what they do is they hold it. But in the meantime, she DMs me. I'm gonna put the DM on the screen and then I'm gonna also put the meme I put because we were talking about her and my close friends because I'm like, you got me fucked up. Your time is coming. So she talking about, oh, you can't just go in my bank account, take my money. And I'm like, yes, I can. Because you you wasted my time. So you wasted my time to take your money. This part of my life is called pain. Cassandra. If you didn't pay him, the government could stick their hands into your bank account and take your money. No warning, nothing. It can't be too late, that, that, that's my money. How is somebody just gonna just take my money? I, I would, listen, I. I had to change real quick and I had to go to work. So I had to make this real quick. My camera died and everything. So I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible, y'all. So fast forward, I charge her card. I get a DM from her. I'm gonna read the DM or put it on the screen somewhere um, so you guys can see it. So I see that and then I post this. And then I basically post my close friend story, which I'll insert here. All right, just to catch y'all up. So now I'm like, okay, now you wanna reach out, now you wanna DM me, now you wanna be doing all of this extra stuff, but you you didn't have that same energy when you tried to run off on the plug, right? So now I'm just kicking. She ends up filing a dispute with Square, again, saying that she didn't authorize the charge, you know, it was basically something fraudulent, but again, I have the DM you sent me, I have the email you sent me saying, I'm sorry, something came up. I have the first appointment you booked a year prior, this appointment, and the good thing about my website, I've never lost a dispute, knock on wood. I've had four disputes in my 10 year career. I've won every single last dispute because this is what I do. On my booking website, already in my policy, it says by booking with me, you agree to my policies. And it's cut and dry, it tells you. If you're 15 minutes late or more, less than 24 hour cancellation, da da da, it's 100% of your service. It's 100%. Not only that, I make you check three boxes. So you check a box saying I read and agree. You check another box saying I agree to the terms and conditions. And then when you check out, you also check another box. So you check three boxes. You put in your own car information. You booked this appointment. The email's the same. The phone number's the same. So like be fucking for real, right? So I had to wait the 90 days. I was pissed because what Square does is they hold your money. So the 160 is just kind of floating in limbo. If she were to win, they would send that to her. If I were to win, which I knew I was, they sent it back to me. But I just, now I gotta wait one, you know, 90 days for my bread. But it's 160, that ain't nothing. I make that literally an hour. So I was like, whatever. Forgot all about it. On day 90, I get an email from Square. The email says, 
Hey Cassandra Olivia hairstylist, great news. We're happy to inform you that the Car Holders Bank has resolved this dispute in your favor. So not only did Square dispute it for me, but her bank ran all my coins back. Every single last one. And so I screenshot it and then I sent her a screenshot of me winning and I just said my booking policy so uh, solid with a little smirk emoji. So I'm out of here. I gotta get ready to do my uh, homecoming baby. But if you guys want some more story times, let me know. But this is just to say like, don't play with her. Cause she's not one of those, okay? I'm 31 years old, I got a house, I got a mortgage, I have three kids, I don't have time to be playing around. Like, if you wanna play, do that with somebody else. But you can't play with me. So, uh, thank you guys for listening and I will catch you guys in my next story time. Bye.